Back in the 80s, I was in my early 20s. This was before I married my now husband, and when I would drive long distances back and forth between my parents and my boyfriends to visit. It was a transitional period for us. He had just graduated, and I hadn't moved out yet to be with him. It was a long drive across several states, through the cold night desert, which took me many hours. This desolate highway would have stretches of road that lasted hundreds of miles, where you quite often wouldn't see another driver, let alone a gas station. So I set out and began one of those journeys. A couple hours into the drive, I noticed a dark vehicle slowly catching up to me. I barely noticed it as I continued to sing along to the air tonight, until the vehicle got aggressively close. I turned off the music and looked into my rearview mirror, seeing the vehicle flash its brights and a hand pointing at my car, motioning me to pull over. Alarmed, I quickly slowed and began to look for a good place to pull off the road to see what must be wrong with my car. The second I began to pull off the road, I felt and heard as clear as day, don't pull over. Then again, much stronger. Don't pull over. Call it God, intuition, or just a gut feeling. But a jolt of adrenaline and fear shot through me. I hit the gas and peeled back onto the highway. Heart pounding, I asked myself what the hell was that? As I saw the vehicle peel out behind me, the dark vehicle continued to closely follow, flashing the brights and motioning me to pull over. Fear and confusion set in as I began to question what was going on. Why was the driver motioning me to pull over? Was there something wrong with my car? And what the hell was that feeling? The warning I felt. It would have been a severe situation if my car broke down out there, especially before the advent of cell phones. But I pressed on still, pushing the pedal harder as the road lines moved by me faster and faster. Just as my resolve started to waver, I questioned if I truly did feel what I felt. I started slowing back down when the dark vehicle jerked and picked up speed. It entered into the oncoming traffic lane and came to the level of my car. The driver smiled, pointed and motioned and mouthed the words pull over. The second I looked into his eyes, I felt pure evil. A wave of horrible sickness in the pit of my stomach overtook me. Again I heard the words in my head, don't pull over. He was greasy, unkept, and I noticed he was missing a couple of teeth in his smile. The teeth he did have were pointed and crooked, a rotted look. He sent a wave of chills through me. This quickly dispelled any thoughts I had about pulling over, and I floored it trying to lose him. He chased after me, the glow of his lights hidden by the rear of my car. I slowed down, and he would slow down. I sped up, and he sped up, mocking and mimicking every move I made. My mouth was dry, my hands ached on the steering wheel I gripped. The fear was overwhelming. He began to try to push me off the road, swapping in fast, coming in closer and closer each time, a threat I would be rammed off the road. I was at the point of tears as this monster continued to terrorize me out in the middle of nowhere. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I saw a couple of semis off into the distance. If only I could make it to get close to them or even get between the trucks I would be safe. He continued to flash his lights, honk his horn blaring. He made a desperate last attempt, swiping in, coming in so close, I could see his evil grin, filled with rage and hatred. I swear I could smell his breath. It felt in that single moment, we were alone, and I had nowhere to escape. Suddenly, I was aware I was close enough to the trucks. I slowed down and drove in between them. I saw the dark vehicle slow way down 
and eventually his tail lights like a pair of demon eyes faded from my view. I sat there between the trucks, bawling, relieved yet terrified. Staying with the trucks for a couple of hours until I felt safe enough to pull over at the nearest gas station and I laid my head on the steering wheel calming my nerves under the soft lights. Fast forward, several years pass. I am married now. My husband is working at a law firm as a high-profile criminal prosecutor in Las Vegas. I am now a full-time mom of several young children. I've always been obsessed with true crime. Dateline, 2020, and unsolved mysteries were always playing at my house. This day was no different, as I was folding laundry in the kitchen while listening to the TV in the other room. The interviewer was talking about a man who was being interviewed on death row. As I paired another match of socks, I heard the description of a man. In one of his tactics for procuring victims, according to him, he would wait along the side of a highway. A car would go by with a family, and he would wait. Another car with a male driver would go by, and he would continue waiting. But every so often, a car would go by with a pretty young woman driving alone. So he would pull out behind them and follow. He would flash his brights and honk and motion for them to pull over. I was paralyzed as I continued to listen to what he was saying. They would eventually pull over. I'd tell them to pop the hood and I'd be able to tell them what was wrong with the car. They would, and I'd yank a couple of wires. When the car wouldn't start, I'd let them know it was no problem. That my buddy has a shop next town. I can give you a ride, and he'll give you a fair deal. I slowly moved into the living room. They'd get in, and I'd rape them. I'd kill them. I'd bear them anywhere in the desert. When asked how many times he did this, he responded, They'll never find all the bodies. I can't even count it so many. And as far as how many got away, maybe two or three. I stood alone, staring at the screen. It was the same toothless grin I saw on the highway that night. It was Henry Lee. Lucas.